Good morning, everyone. My name is Claudia Bielinska, and I represent Cloud Ferro Company. Uh, here at Cloud Ferro Company, I'm Earth Observation uh, uh, Product Manager. And uh, today, I would like to give you a brief introduction to CryoDS platform, uh, Copernicus platform for Earth Observation, Data Access, and Processing. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining uh, our webinar. I hope this uh, one hour um, together uh, will be beneficial for you. Uh, so you will have a chance uh, to learn more about uh, our platform. Uh, I hope that um, some of you are already um, our customers, CryoDIAS users. Uh, so um, maybe you will hear again uh, something about CryoDIAS and maybe uh, some of you, um, plenty of things uh, will be new things. Um, so our today's agenda is um, from the beginning, uh, CryoDS platform architecture, uh, how it's built, how it looks like, what can you find on CryoDS platform, uh, then available data collections. Uh, so both uh, Copernicus data and paid uh, very high resolution data. Uh, then I would like to show you um, some practical um, practical things like uh, how to use our tools, your browser and your finder. And then we will move to um, cloud dashboard. And I would like to uh, show you how to set up a virtual machine on CryoDIAS. And this time um, I would like to show you how to set up virtual machine with Windows operating system. Uh, before on our previous uh, webinars, we showed you how to set up virtual machine with Linux operating system. And today, uh, we will use uh, Windows. And at the end, we'll have some time for a Q&A uh, session. Uh, so you can ask your questions uh, during um, my talk and uh, we will try to answer your questions. But at the end also, we will try to have some time um, to discuss your questions um, if you will have any. And then uh, if anything will uh, come to your mind, you can always uh, write an email to me uh, you, at the end, you will see uh, my in email address. Uh, so I hope um, I hope that um, this session um, will go smooth and uh, we will um, uh, learn some things. Okay, so let's start from CryoDS uh, platform architecture. Um, I would like to start from uh, something else. Um, because as uh, all of you probably know that CryoDIAS platform is a cloud computing environment. But let's think how um, data access and data sharing looks uh, today. I think that some of you um, know how to use cloud platforms and you're doing it uh, in your everyday work. But I know also that uh, some people are still uh, stuck to uh, another way, another path of data accessing and data sharing. Uh, so actually this slide, this process uh, shows um, how it can look like, but uh, this process is really time consuming and it takes stages. Uh, it takes a lot of steps. So starting from uh, satellites, uh, which acquire data, then the data are um, received by uh, some ground stations and then they are stored on ground, ground stations and then um, they are uh, public and they are published on some uh, servers, some uh, data hubs. And then the user is coming to that data hub, taking the data to his computer and then processing the data on his computer and then sharing the data uh, with his colleagues, uh, with some people. So it's really time consuming process. And um, it's not in one uh, in one integrated environment, but it uh, it's completely uh, spread into uh, different stages, different levels. Uh, so what we would like to change, we would like to change the way of uh, data accessing and the data sharing, and uh, that's what CryoDIAS do. So CryoDIAS is a change because. Uh, when you want to acquire, when you want to access lots of data and really heavy data, uh, when uh, different users are accessing this data and the users are spending 80% uh, on downloading and preparing the data for processing. And then also when you process the data on your laptops, on your computers, 
it takes really a lot of time. So cryodias um, is something uh, which is uh, really, uh, I would say, powerful and really useful. It's uh, actually one common environment. It's a data repository. It's a cloud platform. So you can access the data. Uh, you can process the data, everything together in one environment. So today I will um, show you this one environment and uh, uh, I hope um, that you will start using CryoDias. So um, basically CryoDias, it's a CryoDias portal and uh, on that portal you can find uh, very useful tools, EO Finder and EO Browser. So these tools are dedicated for uh, users who would like to visualize the data online, who would like to download the data locally to uh, computers, to computers. And then uh, we also have cloud dashboard. So cloud dashboard is dedicated for users who would like to use uh, cloud environment um, benefits. Uh, so um, cloud dashboard gives you access to earth observation data, uh, to a huge repository of the data, and also it gives you environment for data processing. Also um, data storage, so everything in one place. Uh, so uh, of course, depending uh, on the user needs, uh, you can only use portal and uh, I would say um, quite uh, intermediate tool tools, or you can move to cloud and then uh, do everything uh, online in online in cloud environment. Uh, in general, uh, in general, CryoDias platform um, was built uh, for a European Space Agency for European Commission, uh, and it's really dedicated to Copernicus. Uh, it was actually um, built for Copernicus uh, scientific program because um, the uh, Earth observation data, which you can find on CryoDias, are mainly the data from Copernicus uh, program, so from Sentinel mission, plus um, the other data I will um, tell you more uh, later on, and also a very high resolution data. Uh, so CryoDias portal is a public uh, cloud, uh, so everyone can, can make a use of the CryoDias portal and also um, can use um, CryoDias um, repository. So make a use of the data set which are available. And um, what is hidden, uh, what is hidden under under the this CryoDS portal, cloud services. Uh, so compute, uh, earth data processing, block storage, object storage, virtual networking, and backup. Uh, so um, when you store your data on uh, the CryoDS platform, your data are safe. Uh, when you want to access the data, add more data, transfer the data, uh, you can have uh, different uh, storages, different virtual machines, and then everything uh, is combined in one um, complete environment. So you don't need to uh, switch to different computers and uh, to different platforms um, because it's um, one common um, platform. So when we talk about this uh, cloud environment, uh, we have to highlight that uh, for our users, we offer different virtual machines. Uh, so um, we have um, a lot of uh, virtual machines and uh, differences between those uh, virtual machines are mainly in uh, cores, RAM and uh, SSD network storage. Uh, so depending on your work, depending on the data, depending what you do, uh, how much data uh, do you process, you can choose virtual machine, uh, which will be um, dedicated uh, for you for your work. Um, so we have um, uh, our virtual machines uh, have uh, already has already um, has already. Um, let's say, um, are communicated with the Earth Observation um, Repository. So when you enter virtual machine, you can uh, you have access to Earth Observation Data Repository immediately. So you can make a use uh, of the data um, immediately. Uh, then uh, we have virtual machines, which are um, dedicated for, uh, which are dedicated uh, for users who are using um, a specific software, like uh, remote sensing software, GIS software. Uh, so for example, uh, we have virtual machines with uh, ArcGIS uh, installed, uh, but also with QGIS, with SNAP, and uh, with a diff different software. Of course, uh, you can install your software, you can uh, install everything you want on virtual machine, 
and then uh, use everything um, online in cloud. We have also dedicated servers, and you can see that, that those dedicated servers uh, have different number of cores, uh, RAM and uh, SSD uh, local storage. Uh, we have also virtual machines with GPU, and the GPU is especially uh, needed uh, for data processing, uh, for AI or machine learning. Uh, so I think that everyone can find uh, something uh, for himself. Uh, to uh, to make uh, let's say work uh, and um, projects um, process easier uh, easier. Mm, then uh, coming to the data, uh, what data collections do we offer? Uh, what data collection can you access for free and uh, for what uh, you have to pay? So starting from um, from Copernicus. Uh, uh, we have um, available data, um, uh, imagery data uh, from Sentinel mission. Uh, so starting from Sentinel-1, uh, which is the uh, synthetic aperture radar satellite, uh, you can access the data uh, Sentinel-1 uh, on a different level of processing. Then uh, we have uh, optical uh, satellites, Sentinel-2A and Sentinel-2B. And also here you can access different level of processing. So one level 1C and level 2A. So before the, the atmospheric correction and after the, the atmospheric correction. Uh, then going farther, uh, Sentinel-3, also A and B. Mm, then Sentinel-5P, which is especially dedicated for atmospheric uh, analysis. And uh, apart from Sentinels, uh, we have also uh, data from, from Landsat satellite, Envisat, SMOS, and uh, actually newly added uh, data from MODIS, uh, Terra, and Aqua uh, satellites. Mm. Besides, um, we have also, uh, we give uh, our users access uh, to Copernicus uh, services. Uh, so here you have access to Copernicus atmosphere service, emergency, land, and marine. Uh, so those services are not available, I mean, access to those services is not available uh, from um, Earth, um, so from our tools, uh, Finder and Browser, but from virtual machines. And access to those services and to those data is completely open. You don't pay anything uh, for the access to those data and even for downloading. So you can download the data to your computer or you can use it online, online depends on you. Um, so, imagery data, uh, which are very useful for different analyses, but also we have different uh, digital elevation models. And uh, here you can uh, see the whole list of our products uh, available. And uh, what, is, um, what is important here, for example, Copernicus digital elevation model. Uh, we have uh, Copernicus DEM uh, in different uh, resolutions in uh, 30 meters and 90 meters uh, for the world uh, coverage uh, of digital elevation model. We have also data from uh, Altimeter uh, from JSON3. And uh, also you can have access, also free access uh, to a product S2GLC, which is Sentinel-2 Global Land Cover uh, classification. So this classification was uh, done for uh, 2017 and uh, the whole Europe was classified uh, so you can access the data and see uh, different classes um, of land cover classification. And I know that this classification will be um, um, will be done also, uh, will be updated. Uh, so hopefully soon we will also um, publish the data from this classification as soon as the project will be, uh, of course, finished. Um, then moving uh, to VHR commercial data. Uh, so very high resolution commercial data are dedicated for um, a bit different purposes. I would say more detailed classification, more detailed analysis. Uh, so we give you access uh, to data uh, from Chinese satellite, Jilin-1, uh, from uh, Kazakhstan satellite, Kazeosat, and also Korean Compsat. Uh, so you can see that, for example, resolution of that kind of uh, VHR data uh, is completely different because here, uh, we can even um, access the data uh, in centimeter resolution. Uh, so, for example, centimeter, 40 centimeters of CompSat. And then uh, 4 meters, 1.6 meter uh, resolution, which is also good. Uh, 
we can compare it to uh, Sentinel-2, for example, which is 10, 20, and 60 meter. But maybe at this point, as I'm uh, talking about resolution, I would like to also um, tell you that uh, from now on, uh, we have uh, available online new processor, uh, which is called Enhancer. And uh, thanks to this Enhancer, uh, you can receive a much better resolution of Sentinel-2 data. So uh, not 10 meter resolution, but 2.5 uh, meter resolution. Uh, you can order uh, processed uh, data with this enhancer online and uh, via uh, our um, EO tool, EO finder, um, you can see how it works. Um, okay, so if you would like to learn more about the data, uh, please visit our website. And if you would like to learn more about Sentinels, also please visit um, ESA um, dedicated to Sentinel website. Um, to sum up, uh, what you need to know about CreoDS platform. So first of all, access to the platform is completely for free and it's open uh, to everyone. Uh, you can uh, access uh, the tools, your finder and your browser. Uh, you can access your browser without uh, registering yourself, uh, but if you would like to um, search for the data and download the data to your computer uh, using your um, finder, you have to be registered users. Uh, but of course, registration is completely for free and then uh, using the tool and using the data uh, is completely for free. So uh, you receive a free and immediate access to all the Copernicus data sets, which are available. Um, and of course, downloading is for free. Um, but also uh, to um, users who would like to use um, data and who would like to use our uh, cloud environment, um, cloud computing and storage services are paid. So if you would like to use virtual machines, uh, we can have uh, different um, models, um, different, I would say, pricing models per usage, so hourly and fixed term, monthly, annually. Uh, this is um, something you have to pay for it. And also, if you would like to uh, use our processors, um, which are available for Sentinel-1 and Sentinel-2 data, those services are also, um, you have to pay for it. And then uh, if you would like to have access to very high resolution imagery, uh, this is also uh, something um, which you have to pay. For it. And from this uh, point, I would like to encourage you all uh, to test our platform. Uh, for the beginning, uh, if you would like to apply, uh, we can uh, grant you um, 150 euro free credits. Uh, so you can um, launch your virtual machine and you can uh, try if CryoDS uh, is a platform for you. Then, as I was talking about uh, CryoDS tools, I would like to um, show you what kind of tools uh, we have in our offer. So first of all, when entering a CreoDS portal, you can have access to your browser and your finder and also cloud dashboard. But for you, for all of you uh, who are Python, uh, Python fans, we have Jupyter Notebook and the access to Jupyter Notebook is also for free. Uh, so uh, using uh, Jupyter Notebook, you can prototype uh, anything and you can also use um, Earth Observation Data Repository uh, online from Jupyter Notebook uh, environment. Uh, then uh, we have also third party application. Uh, so you can uh, access, for example, S2 Scenes, uh, which is the kind of application uh, to visualize Sentinel data in 2D and also 3D. Um, but this third part applications uh, are also kind of applications built and developed by our users. Uh, for example, um, uh, in the frames of uh, ISA uh, projects. So as the uh, S2GLC uh, product was developed and then uh, it's open and it's available uh, for, for all of the users. Um, okay, from this point, I would like to show you your browser and your finder. Uh, I would like to show you uh, how those two, how those tools works and how you can uh, use it on your own. Uh, so I will switch to the browser. Okay, so coming to the uh, CreoDS portal. Um, 
here in the tab tools, we have EO Browser and EO Finder, also Cloud Dashboard and Jupyter Hub. So let's start from uh, EO Browser, uh, which is the tool for data browsing uh, and data visualization. Uh, so um, for EO, to use EO Browser, you don't have to be registered users, but to use EO Finder, you have to be registered user. So uh, if not yet, um, you're not registered, please just uh, click the button register and register yourself uh, to use uh, the full benefits of the platform. So I will log uh, in myself. And then I will go to EO Browser. Um, so here in your browser, you can see the map. Uh, so it takes actually uh, my location. So we are located in Warsaw. Uh, here on the left side, you have the whole list um, of data um, available um, here online. Data you can visualize here and uh, you, can, um, you can search uh, for the place of your interest. So here I would like to see Sentinel-1, uh, sorry, Sentinel-2 on level um, 2A, so after the atmospheric correction. And I would like to see the data um, without clouds. It would be the best to see without clouds, but sometimes it's just simply impossible. So I will place here 10% of the full cloud coverage. Then we should select time range. So at the time range when the data were um, was captured, uh, so, um, the time uh, of our interest. So I will go to, let's say, March and then um, ending today. So let's click search and see if there are any nice data without clouds from the place which we are here now. Okay, so I see that here we have, because um, first of all, we can see the results here and also we can see the results on the map. Uh, so we can visualize it from map or from this uh, search field. So I will visualize the data. So quickly the data were visualized. Uh, this is RGB composition. So uh, based on the uh, free channels, but here in the visualization tab, you can see that we have here different uh, different modes of visualization. Uh, so here, now we have true color. Let's maybe find some river. We can have a uh, scene classification map. So here we can see the green uh, areas and uh, build up areas and then water bodies. We can have a false color, so using infrared. Uh, so in the bright red, you see all the green spaces in Warsaw. Then we can have a uh, false color visualization, NDVI visualization. So to uh, detect um, green areas, detect um, agricultural fields, detect forests and so on. We have here moisture index and we have also shortwave infrared. Uh, NDWA, so to detect water bodies, and NDSC, SI, sorry, index. Um, so we can here, for example, click uh, one of the tabs of the visualization, and uh, we can um, compare, for example, false color to the RGB uh, visualization. Um, here before I have added some pins. So those are green fields uh, in one of the uh, regions in Poland. And uh, I can visualize um, the data. So I have here visualization of NDVI and also, sorry, visualization of RGB. So if I would like to compare those images, I have to click here, compare, and then comparing by opacity or comparing by splitting those two, uh, let's say windows. So we can see how it looks in RGB and how it looks uh, visualized by 
NDVI index. Uh, so um, this is what CreoDIS browser uh, is for. And then also when we are in the visualization tab, from this window, we can download the image. Uh, but the image will be downloaded as a screenshot, not as the whole Sentinel uh, file with all of the bands. It will be just a screenshot, so you can, for example, present it to your colleagues, uh, paste it in your uh, presentation, and so on. Um, so let's move back to CreoDS portal, portal and then go to Tools, and then let's see EO Finder. So EO Finder, I would say, is more advanced tool. Uh, so from um, this tool, you can search for the data uh, by uh, putting here, indicating here different criteria, and you can download the data. I mean, download the whole Sentinel file. Um, so maybe let's move to, um, to Italy, and then uh, we can indicate here observed time or published time. So when the satellite observed that area, or when the data were published to our uh, repository. You can also search uh, a place on the map. You can also write the name of the place here. Or you can, if you know uh, what's the um, identifier of the Sentinel data you want to search, you can also put the product identifier here. So uh, I will go to publish and then I will uh, start to search for the data um, from May and then ending here today. Cloud coverage, of course, as less as possible. Uh, then uh, we will choose collection, so Sentinel-2. And here maybe I would just um, add that you can see more data available. So uh, you can browse the Caselsat data, uh, Modis Aquaterra, and also Copernicus Dem. But then uh, I will just choose Sentinel-2, and then level processing 2A. And I will draw a polygon on the map to search for the data of the particular area around Venice. And then I will click search. Okay, so I have a couple of uh, sentinels. We can see that cloud even 0%. I can visualize it on the map. Coming one. Uh, looking at uh, images one by one. So if I will find the one which I like, it can be here. I can simply visualize it. Um, it looks good for me. And then I can download it. So by clicking this um, button download, uh, the whole imagery, the whole Sentinel file with all of the bands will, will be downloaded locally to my computer. Uh, you can also, um, for example, add the data to your cart. Uh, so you can just, you know, as, a, as an in-store, collect the data. Uh, some of the data are available online, so you can download them directly. But some of the data are kind of orderable. Uh, so uh, we have to order them first. We have to download them first to our cache uh, and cache and, and when it will be available, uh, you will be informed and you will be able to download them to your computer. Uh, so this is uh, one way of using um, the whole data um, repository, uh, downloading, downloading the data directly to your computer. Um, but uh, what I wanted to show you today is how to use a cloud environment and how to use um, uh, virtual machines. So I will go back to the uh, CreoDIAS portal and then I will go to Tools and then Cloud Dashboard. Here um, at the first window uh, of Cloud Dashboard, we have to be we have to log in. Uh, so using Open ID Connect means that we are using our uh, um, login credentials as um, they are uh, used for CreoDIAS platform. Uh, so yes, we are using it. Connect. So we are connected to our environment, to our dashboard. And if we would like to open, uh, launch new instance, a new virtual machine, we go to instances. Uh, so from this window, I, you can see that, for example, I have here one uh, virtual machine, uh, which was created yesterday. You can see the whole information about the virtual machine. Uh, so from this point, uh, you can disconnect, you can shut down your virtual machine 
and do um, anything uh, which is uh, possible here. Uh, so um, this is uh, the kind of first window which informs you about your um, about your environment, uh, wh what virtual machines you have and uh, how do you use them and if they are running and if they are not running. But uh, to launch vir virtual machine, uh, we should click the button launch instance and then we will be moved uh, to the pane uh, um, for launching instance. Uh, so let's start from the instance name. Uh, I will call it Rio EO. Uh, then we go to source. Uh, so source means, uh, for example, uh, what operating system uh, our virtual machine should have, or if it has to be the image, uh, instance snapshot, volume, volume snapshot. If you will choose the image, uh, so the virtual machine will be simply the image of uh, the image of uh, operating system. So here you can see that uh, the list of available images uh, is quite long. Mm, and uh, we have her, for example, here, uh, CentOS with send for cap. We have Windows uh, with ArcGIS. Uh, and uh, Ubuntu with QGIS. Uh, so different operating systems with, for example, already installed uh, software. TensorFlow for machine learning. Uh, so depending uh, what you would like to do. But I would like simply, I would like to um, simply uh, use the Windows image. Uh, so we can see that uh, Windows uh, 2019 is available. So um, I would like to add this one to my virtual machine simply by clicking this arrow up. So it was added, we can see it here, and we can we can move to flavor. Uh, so uh, what, uh, what flavor uh, should be of our virtual machine? Uh, at the beginning of my presentation, I showed you that we have uh, plenty of different flavors, uh, depending on um, uh, RAM, depending on total disk, uh, and so on. Uh, so uh, here you can see that we have very small um, flavors, let's say, and then uh, they are, the numbers are also uh, growing, so like a very mm, big extra large. Uh, so for today purpose, I would like to use, uh, for example, this one, so EO1 large, uh, so it will be enough uh, for me. And uh, this virtual machine uh, has already connection to Earth Observation uh, Data Repository, uh, so, uh, while entering the virtual machine, I will be um, already connected to the uh, repository with the data, so I can uh, use the data in virtual machine. Okay, so I was connected. I mean, I, I added the flavor and then I will go to networks. Uh, so, actually, uh, here adding the networks uh, mean that uh, we will communicate, I mean, means adding channels uh, for communication. Uh, so first of all, we should add the private network um, to communicate with our virtual machine and uh, also with different instances. And also we should add this connection, EO data, so means the connection to Earth Observation Data Repository. Okay, uh, the next step uh, and the last step actually is security groups. Uh, so, uh, if we want to have our virtual machine visible from outside, uh, so uh, if we want to ping it from outside, uh, so our remote desktop will be visible for us, uh, we should add this uh, security group. So, allow ping SSH uh, from remote desktop. So, by adding, um, by clicking this arrow, we will just uh, use this security group as uh, it's already here. And then this is the last step, uh, which is just enough for us to um, create the virtual machine. And then we should just click launch instance and it will be immediately launched. We should just wait a bit uh, for building it, preparing it, and it will be running. Uh, so here, uh, what is important? IP addresses. Uh, so when we are creating virtual machines, the IP addresses, private uh, IP addresses are already created. Uh, but very important step is also to allocate uh, floating IP, which we will do soon. Um, then uh, I would like to move uh, 
to the console of my virtual machine uh, to establish the password. Uh, because I'm not going to use the virtual machine from, let's say, this, uh, this window uh, from the browser, from dashboard, uh, but I would like to move uh, to the um, remote desktop and to use it there. So from this point, I would like to open the console and then um, establish the password uh, for administrator uh, so I can uh, access uh, the virtual machine from outside. Okay, it takes time to open to start uh, the console. Getting ready. Okay. Okay, as always, with live demos, sometimes it doesn't go so quick, but that's technology, so let's give it time. Okay. We have We have here the running console. Okay. Um, as it's not running so quickly, uh, maybe I'll just simply uh, show you how to access the virtual machine from the remote desktop, but okay, yes. Uh, so it says that the user password must be changed before signing in. Okay, that's right. So that's what we want to do. Uh, so here the administrator window, uh, we have to we have to find ourselves with the uh, running mouse. Mm. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, the mouse is doubled here, so sometimes it's hard to catch it. Mm. Okay, yes. So here we have to create a um, new password. Okay, as we created it, let's enter. Let's change the password for the administrator. Okay, the password uh, was changed. Okay, and then uh, it's applying the changes and uh, you can enter, enter the console from here. Uh, but as you can see, using console from, uh, from this place, it, it's quite painful. Uh, so let's move to remote desktop. Um, so I would simply uh, go back to uh, go back to instances, and then uh, the only last step which I have to do is to allocate floating IP. Uh, so from this place, uh, uh, associate floating IP. Sorry, not allocate, but I will choose associate floating IP. Uh, 
so uh, we have to choose the IP address um, for our virtual machine and the port uh, which will be uh, allocated to our virtual machine. Uh, so let's not uh, allocate it to EO data uh, IP, but rather to our private uh, network. Uh, so, um, so this will be, it will be this one. Okay, sorry, I was somehow. Okay, again. And this one, and let's associate the IP. It's working, and soon the floating IP will be added. Okay, so our floating IP is here. So here in the dashboard in this window, you have all the necessary information you need to uh, know mm, to work. Uh, with the remote desktop. Okay, so from here, I would like to uh, open the remote desktop. Mm, so then we choose the, mm, the floating IP. Um, okay, somehow I can see, let's, let's see. Okay, I didn't see my floating IP be newly created. So I will choose the one which I've created yesterday. So this is the completely different, I mean, the completely same step. Okay, and entering the virtual machine. Okay, so we are here. So uh, this is our virtual machine. So if we, uh, with Windows operating system. So if we would like to um, see the uh, Earth Observation Data Repository, from, uh, the, um, from the desktop, we have here the script written to mount the uh, LData. So if we click the script here, uh, immediately we will have the access to Earth Observation um, storage, the whole repository. So you can see uh, it's here and the total size is 44, 44 petabytes. Uh, so really a normal repository. And we will uh, try to see what's inside of this repository. So of course, uh, we will see uh, what's inside, uh, but then uh, if you would like to work with the data, uh, you, need, you need a dedicated software. Um, yes, uh, so here you see that we have here Copernicus services, NVSAT, JSON, Landsat, uh, and the whole package of uh, Sentinel data sets and also SMOS. So here we have um, uh, current uh, data sets uh, which are available online. We, online. we have also archive data sets. Uh, so if only would, you would like to, for example, compare, do some analysis um, of the data, uh, comparing different stages, uh, different months, uh, you can search for the data here and you can um, use the data uh, from this place, of course, uh, using um, dedicated software. Uh, so that's the way of creating a virtual machine and then entering the virtual machine from the remote desktop. Um, I hope uh, this will be useful for you. Uh, so this is the Windows and if only you would like to see how uh, to create it uh, with Linux, uh, please visit our YouTube channel um, to see the tutorials. Okay, so then I will come back. I'll just um, disconnect uh, my virtual machine and then I will come back um, to the presentation. Okay. Um, so yes, I was, I was here already created the virtual machines. Uh, maybe at the end, I would like to uh, give you um, very short information how our users uh, are using Creodias platform, uh, what products uh, they developed, uh, what projects uh, they've made, they finished on Creodias platform. Uh, so one of the 
<clears throat> one of the um, good example is actually software send for cap. Soft software send for cap uh, works on CreoDesk platform, and this is um, the freeware software dedicated for agriculture monitoring. Uh, so basically, send for cap software uh, uses Sentinel data and also uh, Landsat data. Uh, so uh, this is all actually dedicated for um, cap uh, purposes. Uh, so while using uh, send for cap software, uh, you can, uh, for example, uh, generate uh, such products as cultivated crop type map, grassland mowing products, vegetation status indicator, and then agricultural practices monitoring products. Uh, so um, you can actually get um, really um, nice, uh, nice and useful products. Uh, so um, for the agriculture monitoring, and the Send for Cap software is um, all the time, uh, let's say, modernized and uh, new versions um, has been uh, developed. Uh, so you can check the software and 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 see it will be if it will be useful for your purposes. Then another um, example is uh, S2GLC, which I have already told you about. Uh, S2GLC was uh, was a product, was a project actually, uh, developed by Space Research Center, Polish Academy of Sciences, and it was one of the European Space Agency projects. So in 2017, they have prepared classification of Sentinel-2 data. So you can see the whole map of Europe, uh, land cover map of Europe uh, with different um, Class, uh, class types. And then also an uh, interesting project uh, developed by a Space Research Center and also Institute of Geodesy and Cartography, which is called uh, EOSTAT. So those are services for Earth observation-based statistical information for agriculture. And the project was dedicated for the uh, main statistical office and also agency for restructuring and manufacturing um, uh, modernization of agriculture. Uh, so, uh, also based uh, based on Sentinel data set, they have prepared uh, classifications uh, from different years uh, to compare uh, the agricultural state um, of Poland and to see how it has been changed uh, over the years, over the months, uh, over the different seasons. Uh, so, um, as you can see, CreoDesk platform uh, is um, the platform um, the cloud computing platform, uh, which can uh, help you uh, in developing such uh, nice projects and also uh, which is uh, really helpful uh, if you have um, big data to be, to be processed and if your products, uh, if your sorry projects uh, need a powerful environment and uh, if uh, you need really uh, to process the data in a, a short time, but really, uh, but in really efficient way. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the webinar and of course I encourage you to visit um, CreoDesk platform and to test the platform and to see how it works for you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.